getting the flow, the whole mind must explain that Hashem watches over us like the pupil of his eye as opposed to the eye itself. The eye, Bechlal, he said, Inayim goes and Malochim. Inayim. Hashem's eyes. Which means it's a certain, uh, to relatively speaking, a certain physical level of Likus. But Kish and Eino is deeper still. And that's to be explained. So in Eino's Gimel, he began, and first, he, first he talked about different Perushim in Echod. And the final Perush in Echod is Liyachadoi, unique to the Jew, and that is the prohibition even of Shittuf, of a partnership with Hashem. So in Eino's Gimel, he began by explaining that the nations of the world say, Roma kol goyim havaya l'shemayim kvoydoi. That where is God manifest? Where is closer to Hashem in heaven? That's because they understand creation as being ill of Olu, and therefore higher up the chain of command, the closer you are. However, by Eden, it's magbil ha-shevas ha-mashpil yildirez b'shemayim avodet. That it's a descent for Hashem, as it were, equally to view, to engage both heaven and earth. That's because the whole creation is not Ilavalu, but Yesh Maim radical. As we said, reframing that, that Hashem is not a creator or even the only creator, but he is the creator. A creator means that's what he is. He's the great divine artist, the divine intelligence. He's not the divine intelligence. He has chosen to manifest intelligence, but utterly beyond the notion of creator, intelligence, and all of its levels. So Shemaim and Oretz are both equally a hashpola, a descent. Now that led to, and therefore, it doesn't really spell out the therefore. Yes, look, if you look at, uh, I don't know if you have the same page numbers as me, but page of Gimel, three lines from the top. The last few words, Mizem Mukher, Gambene Gela Inash Kacha Pratis. Seems the flow is that since Shemaim and the Oretz are equal, and just like he's governed Shemaim, no one argues that. So he equally governs Oretz because Shemaim and Oretz are equal. <laughs> I mean, there are other explanations given in this. Inasmuch that Bri is Yeshma'i and the must be Ashgacha Protis. The must be Ashgacha Protis if creation is something from nothing and requires, therefore, which he doesn't say here in this mind, he doesn't stress the constant creation. But elsewhere in Chassidus, that's, that's pointed out that since creation is ongoing, it's more than Ashgacha Protis, it's more than governing and directing creation, it's bringing it into being. Every fiber of it, every subatomic particle, not only is he aware of and considering, but willing it into existence. And so the most intimate that Shachar Prat is possible is willing you into being. That's it says elsewhere, I said this, but it doesn't seem that's the point so much here. The point here is that since Shemaim Vodits are equal, the Protest extends to everything. And this is a big chiddush. We started saying that the Rambam made in the Vuchim told about Shem Tev Ashkach Protis. This mind levels is only understood in general to apply to humanity. With humanity itself, the higher the person, the more Ashkach Protis. In the words of the Rambam, the sinner, who therefore is lower than the lowest creation, because the lowest creation doesn't behave other than according to the will of the Creator. Nothing bad or good, but nothing bad. So, but a person who sins is lower. That's why we created last, right? Man is created last because it's his choice. It's either he is the, the lowest of all of existence or the highest. So, classic before the Balshemtiv, the higher the, the tzaddik is the highest Hashgacha Pratis, Ein Hashem El Tzaddikim. 
in the, God's providence, and the Rishoyim, the words of the Rambam, are abandoned to the whims of nature. Now, long comes the Baal Shem Tov, this big Chiddush. So first of all, how do you reconcile what the Rambam says, which is part of Teres Emes, with the Shita of the Baal Shem Tov that everybody is now embraced? Everything that the Chassidus brought as revolution, everything is now universal, although there was tremendous opposition at the outset. Akoponim, the Mitra Rebbe really explains the, uh, 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 resolves the, the apparent stira, but the Rebbe elaborates, and the kud of this, the answer is that the Rambam is speaking in terms of the revelation. Where do you see Ashgach Pratis more? So you see Ashgach Pratis in the higher creations. The more person is bottled, the more transparent he is to, to providence. The more hell of a hester, the more hell of a hester. The Vashem is speaking Be'etzim. Be'etzim, Ashgach HaProtis, Atzimus, Mamash, is involved in every, in the minutia of creation. And as he says over here from the Fidi Gerebbe, who revealed this, it's a big Chiddush of the Fidi Gerebbe in his articulation of the Vashem teaching, that not only is, is the Yvishti involved creating, every detail is negated to the whole Kavana. Every detail is negated to the one single Kavana of Dira B'Tachtoyne. It's only Mitzad Atzimus, Mamash. Akoponim, so the resolution of the contradiction between this and the Rambam is, the Rambam is being, speaking where it's overt, where you see it, just like a holy place. Hashem is everywhere. Why is this place holy and this place not holy? Or this time is holy? Shabbos, Yontif. It's because here is revealed more. Why revealed more? Because there's less resistance. Okay, that's this resolution. And now he's in the middle of a shtickle, like little pilpul here. And said, quoting from the Tzemach Tzedek, that the, uh, it was, again, it was a big time there, a big time there against the Barshem Tov and Chassidus. It's a new, uh, they, they consider it to be heresy. The notion that Abish is involved in every detail, it's all negated to the Kavana. It's nonsense. They consider it the worst than that heresy. Where's the market in Nigla? So the Altreva that Tzemach Tzedek brings in his, in his uh, beer, his Shemis until him, it's famous. I can never made it famous. A tshuva nitzchis, an eternal answer. Where's the market in Nigla? The market in Nigla is the famous gemara in Chulin that that Yochanan saw a stork, a heron, and he declared, and he saw it diving into the water, coming up with a fish in its in its uh, beak. Mishpatech hatayim rabba. Your judgment extends to the great deep. And Rashi says that you arranged this heron to judge and carry out your quote unquote revenge <laughs> on this particular fish that this fish has to be uh, consumed. Now there was another, uh, another market, but that market, there's another source, we'll just repeat it again. There's another good model, the Chet also brings up this, it's a medrash. The medrash says that one of the Amaroyim was watching a hunter uh, trapping, uh, catching birds. And he said, if heaven doesn't announce that this one is Dimus, going to be spared. And this one is Spakula, is going to be uh, 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 captured, die. The hunter couldn't catch it. Chol, it's also a raya. He brought in the orders from the Kailas Yaakov. It's not such a, a strong raya because it could be argued there that the heavenly voice, he says, Abaskar, Abaskar. The heavenly voice is not Abish himself, it's, uh, it's the Malachim. The direct involvement of the Abish to love Dafka is conveyed in the word Basco. That's why the Altaba did not bring a raya from there. The raya brought us from Chulin. Mishpatecha to Haim Rabba. Well, it's clear that Atzimus, the Abish himself, is involved in the minutia that happens in, in, in the depth of the ocean that no one would ever know. And it seems has no effect on anything or anyone. It's all part of the Kavan. Now, now we started and we're going to we didn't learn the answer, let's pick up the question again. Behold the Omra Chazal, it's it's hard of 36 in the text. Everybody has the place. As for the statement. 
in Gemari Nava Dezore on the Pesach, Vatase Odom Kedgei Hayom. The Pesach says in Habakkuk that Hashem makes people like the fish of the sea. It's a punishment. Ma dogim So that's the, that's the Pesach, says the Gemara. What's the analogy to the fish of the sea, of the ocean? Ma dogim shebeyom kolagod mechaveda belis chaveda. Just like in the ocean, the bigger fish swallows the smaller. So to man, if not for the fear of government, if one fellow would swallow his, the other alive. So the Chura, end quote, that's a shayla. It seems that the capriciousness of nature, that man is cast, the sinful man, to the, to the whims of nature, like the ocean. With Ashgoch Pratis, answer, Eina Kavona, the intent of the Gimbar is not, Shabli is a dog, the dog God with men who, who believed in a Mishpat. It's not that this is not determined by heaven. It is. El Al Derech, Shabir Shashi, Bechul, and Gabi Sholach, but Hashem will determine which creature will devour which creature. Now, what's the Raya? Raya Ledova, the proof is, No, I'm sorry, I have to correct something. The Shaila is from that Gemara about the fish. Where Sri Ajaka Protis extends to every creature. That seems to be saying that one fish swallows the other. <coughs> and it's arbitrary. So, but the Raya that it's not, it's also like the Gurashi says in Chulim, but Raya Ledova, because Sharimizeh, Echicha, but Gemara, Shagamba, Min Adam, Kainu. Because the Gemara is saying that the same is also true of people. And when it comes to people, all of me are protest. My shail is again, Rambam says that the Shoyim are not. Maybe the Pesach is talking about the Shoyim. Okay, it's not here. It seems the Pesach, therefore, we're not talking about the Shoyim. Stambli Odom. So Stambli Odom all agree, I must say that, that there is a Shogha protest, and the Gemara is drawing the analogy between people and the fish. The Harai, on the contrary, yeah, the fish also has Ashgacha Pratis. So the fish are coming to illustrate something, but you end up learning something about the fish. The simple meaning of the Gemara is the fish illustrating what life would be like without the fear of government. But we end up learning about the fish because the comparison is to people all agree that on B'nai Adam is Ashgacha Pratis, and he's talking clearly not about this. Silly wicked people. So we learn from here the analogy that there's also Ashraqa Pratis on the fish. You follow? It's an expression. Habola Lambe, you're using something to teach to illustrate something else, and, and it ends up being taught about. The fact that we're using the fish to illustrate man tells us, ah, the Ashraqa Pratis applies to fish too, because otherwise there couldn't be a comparison. Is that clear? <laughs> So we learn other rabbis. So you see, Mir Shal Gam Bet Geayom Esh Ashgach Pratis. The fact that we're comparing it to mankind, to Mina Adam, on the contrary, that shows that there's Ashgach Pratis. So the Shaila initially was that the Gemara is saying, seems to be saying that one the big one swallows the smaller one. That's just the nature of life. There's no, there's no mishpat here. But the fact that the Gemara says so too is people, if not for fear of government, and clearly if one person swallows somebody else, that's a heavenly judgment. So therefore, that applies back to the fish. That's also heavenly judgment. It's unusual to have such a pilpul in the environment. It's a pilpul in the, in the theological uh, analysis. Are we clear? Now, but what about still a little bit of attention here, which is why I understood it this way. If not for the yoke of heaven, then people would swallow each other. If not for the fear of government, people would swallow each other. So it also sounds like a little bit, they'd swallow each other without God determining who gets swallowed. So that too needs to be addressed, which is why I thought that was the case. So it continues. And that's which the, the Gemara says in the Mishnah says, in order that the person shouldn't swallow the other person alive. So, there has to be the fear of government. 
pray for the welfare of government because it keeps it keeps people from swallowing each other alive. So that sounds like Afsha Koyal Hu Bajgocha Bedina Bemish, but no one's get swallowed alive and if he doesn't deserve it. If it isn't determined by heaven. It's an interesting answer. You hear the question. We have to worry we need government. If you don't deserve to be swallowed alive, not be swallowed alive. Even if what? Even if there's anarchy, even if you're living in a society where government doesn't have control. So it's not so posh it. Answer. You've got to pray for government. Why? It's similar to what it says in the Gemara. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I okay, can you can consult? Uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry. So I didn't, I missed that. If you can go to your phone. I sent it, I can send it again to your phone. Huh? Can you put it, can you post it again? To the end, sorry, we'll make it. So the answer is an interesting answer. The Gemara says that it's forbidden for a person to stay, to stand in a dangerous place. Sulam Ru'ah to walk to, to climb on a, a weak ladder, Kaiser would stand next to a, a weak wall, the Khayitzabaza. And the child is, why should you worry? Why should you worry? If your time is up, your time is up. If that's the Mishpah, that's the Mishpah. So why why in halacha does a person have to avoid dangerous situations? The answer is, this is the same thing over here. In order to be safe from Sakana, you need many merits. And if you don't have it, so you're subject to this danger. Yeah, and that's, but that's the Mishpat. You, you don't have, there's the Mishpat here too. If you have many Shuyas, go ahead, stand there. But if you don't, don't. The question is, where's the mishpat? If I don't deserve it, that's not going to happen to me. Just because it's a weak ladder. The answer is, to be there in such a place, you have to have a, many schuyas. And if you don't, then you have to serve this. If there's your arrogance, you think you can, can, can skirt with danger. So you, you brought the judgment on yourself. <laughs> So therefore, likewise in this case at hand, that a person would swallow the other without government, without, the, without government, where's the judgment? Because it's a sakana. Without government, it's a dangerous society. In order to avoid that, you need government. And therefore, you need tefillah. You have to pray for the well-being of government. So again, it's all part of the person's schus. You pray for the welfare of government, so you've earned and deserved uh, protection. All to say that it's not, it's not uh, again, capricious. It's not just the whims of nature. Now concluding this whole discussion. This was all just a discussion of Ashgacha Pratis that extends to the minutiae of life. And that is the mitzvah given to Yidin and to reveal that to the world, the Yichud, Echad, the third Pirish in Echad. But those who don't believe in Ashgacha, in, that, that don't, who don't believe that Hashem governs Ashgach, everything down here. But left the world to be run by the constellations, the forces of nature, the angelic forces. That's Even the nations of the world are commanded to reject that. 
We call Mokka and when it's Davo, Mesed Ma'ala Shituf. But to say they were not commanded to exclude a partnership. Kim B'nei Yisrael, only Yidin, Shin Tzavo, Gam L'Yachadoi, the Dei Kamamet, Hashem Echod, third Pirush, is L'Yachadoi to declare his unity to the degree of what? That there's nothing outside of it, not even a partnership. Okay, so there was a kind of a digression, not a digression, but an elaboration, Ashkoch HaPratis, which excludes even the union of Shituf. Hashem directly and actively involved himself in every detail of existence. Yeah, we're kind of clear. All right, let's continue. Mam Sheba Maimer explains that Marash and the Maimer upon which is Maimer is based. Levi, do you have, we're missing the page. You have it on your phone? Yeah, so it's the, 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 the second. The last oyster is Gimel. Mam Shek Levayr Shlilas Yin Hashit Abetais Vez Biyot And the Rebarash explains further the negation of this notion of partnership on a more subtle level or a deeper explanation. Imayim Marazal says in Gimbari Nida Shleish Shut Pim Yesh Ba'odom A person, every person has three partners. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ba'ovi Ve'imayim Hashem and his father and his mother. Shit does not simply mean it doesn't have to mean equal partners. That for sure is, is to be negated when it comes to Hashem. Even a partnership that's only in one uh, small detail is also called shit of partnership. All of who's the Rabbi Yisrael, but civil for which we are, 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 are commanded to negate in the mitzvah of declaring and expressing his unity. Why? How does this? We see this from this Gemara. The three partners in man are not equal partners. Aside from the fact that the role of the parent is only the physical, the parents of the physical body, bones from the father, bones, etc., and the flesh, from them, and etc., from the mother. And that is secondary, of course, to the neshama, the living spirit. That, of course, is the main part of a person. When when the soul leaves, the, the, what the parents contributed remains like an inanimate stone. Who's the person? The person is the person, the personality, the soul. But moreover, so already pointing out that the partnership isn't equal. In other days, furthermore, gamtsir tzirasavlaad, the form of the child. What the father and mother contribute. So that this should evolve into the form of the child for the nine months of, of, of gestation or pregnancy in the mother's womb. This is not done by the father and mother. It's not like they're consciously contributing to anything here. In their knowledge or their will. It just happens. And why does it happen? Because God has implanted these, uh, these, 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 uh, these properties within, within the human body. In other words, it seems to be saying, the actual conception is an act of will. Is an active world, is an active engagement. But thereafter, as it just happens, aware or not aware, wanting it or not wanting it. Elia de Kodesh Baruch Levad, they bestood himself, so he's adding to the, to the, to making the partnership of parents, father and mother, even less significant. Aside from the fact that they only provide the physical, 
that even in that, not the physical form and sophistication of, of what emerges, that they don't contribute. That's despite them. That's the Ibrahim himself. Kemayim Barazal, we're following this. Yeah, Kemayim Barazal says in Gemara, it's a Gemara in Brachis. Beginning with Sechta Brachis. Al Posak ain Surkele, Kendo, there's no rock like our God. So the Gemara that teaches ain't Sayer Kele, Kendo, there's no artist or no fashioner like our God. Shetzor Tzura, but Soich Tzura. He forms, he fashions a form inside a form. It's referring to the fetus in the mother. She's one tzura, and he creates a tzura within the tzura. So this is a wondrous, a wondrous power of the Abishta from the initial uh, seed and so on, that from this develops a, a child, a human being. The conclusion of all this is that even though the role of the father and mother is very small. They're still called partners. They had a choice to get together, hopefully. And if they won't get, there's not, not going to get married, there's no child. When it comes to the male, there's in Kishra Elul Adas, so it has to be willing. The female could be, God forbid, forced. But he's speaking the way things are, the way they should be. You know, marriage is mutual consent and coming together is by mutual consent and the contrary, it's by her, by her permission, not by his request. And certainly not demand. Akoponim, so they do have some, it's a shutfus, they do contribute, coming together, getting married. That's what some yachish yeshlem ktas shutzva. Since they have some some role here as a partner with God, they consent to the desire to get married. They cry him shut and they call partners. So end of discussion. What do we want from here? That should have conclusion that hidden in the commandment the yachad which is to negate even the end of shutzvus conclusion. It's they're not just equal partners to negate, but even a, a partnership with Hashem that is. Minor. Uh, sure. No. It's a universal, universal statement. The shlaisha should involve them. Spring every every human being. No. He just wants to bring out that should have doesn't mean necessarily equal partner. That's why he's bringing out from this. He's when it comes to the. No, no. And one second. All he's all he's bringing this whole business is. To define the word shutif, sh that's all it's for. That's all he's using it for. You're asking, yeah, we're really asking another question. So, after having said we just did, how, how are we calling parents shutfim? You didn't know it or not, or not you objectively. The answer to that is because there is this element of prayer. And that's that is also true even for the rest of the world, because since it's a mitzvah to marry and have children, so in their mitzvah is the element of prira, it's not a mitzvah. There's prira in the Shev Mitzvah Bnei Noya. We'll go a bit further, we'll see. But really what he's bringing, that's, that's a shali we just asked now and answered. He's just bringing this whole thing here to, in this context of shutuf means even negligible, even a small role. And that, like Abhi the Abishter, in general creation, in general creation, a yid is, must negate. Can't grant that even subtle degree of independence. Concluding. So therefore, when we're commanded, the yachadai, not even to entertain the notion of a partnership, should shuva, not only are we negating uh, considerable partners, like the nations of the world, they call God the God of gods. The other forces are also granted this power, 
So not only that, that's really a powerful kind of shutzfus. Not only that is prohibited or not true. Any kind of partnership, even the lightest literally kind of partnership, which illustrating from the role of father and mother in the creation of a child. Now, even though it is true that the Ashpo comes down, so Hashem sustains and governs the world through the forces of nature, the constellations, etc. It means Gashmis and Ruchnius. Befat is Managolos, and especially to his Managolos, the experience in Tanya, Shosichil is Ashba, the Kechov Mazol is Dafke, then it's all filtered through Kechov Mazolis, which is why a person can be over Isaskila, explains there, and live more than 60 years, etc. Isakoris, sorry. Huh? Yeah. Mikomoka, nonetheless, so they have a role or they don't have a role. The Ashpa does come through Kichov and Mazolis, which means the stars and the constellations, the forces of nature. They cannot be turned partners. Why? They don't have choice at all. And that's why that's answered by parents. To some degree, there is Pchira. Because in some mitzvah, there's Pchira. Now, whatever Pchira means, that's another question. Not addressing. That's a different question altogether. How do you reconcile? How do you reconcile Ein Oed Mulvadoi with Pchira? No, my question Right. So, so for sure that's okay to call it a shutz, of course, there's an the So for sure that's okay to call it a shutz. Huh? They have, they have, they have bechira in their mitzvahs. There's no commandment if there's no free choice. And there's punishment. The whole tale is full of the mitzvahim, the etc. are all punished. But the, the big question is, which I'm not going to deal with, which is the question which is really fundamentally unanswerable, is how do, how do you reconcile Pchira with Enid Mulvade? Which is the same question, really. How do you reconcile Barishas Borolikim Sashmai Vahadas with Enid Mulvade? But it really is not the same question, because there, in Shemaim Vahadas, it just looks like it's independent. Really, it isn't. And there's no choice. But the question becomes I'm here, like who's choosing? Who's choosing? Your brain, every part of you has been created. Where's the element of independence? Choice, choosing, by definition. If you're choosing, so there's an element of, of, uh, of independence. So how does it reconcile with everything we're saying here? And here's the, this makes the question even thornier is that said that the true here is only by a year. The true, like the true, like uh, extreme, extreme uh, choices. Why? Because since the Shomas Mushish and Atzmo says, wait a minute, Mushish and Atzmo, then there's Mamish no Bechir. That's the opposite. Then that's transparently bound up with the essence of Hashem. That would, that would mean less Bechir, not more. Okay, it's a huge question, which is no neat answer. As you, I don't know if you know, but a number of years ago, I, I addressed it in a lecture on free choice here. Attended with uh, some 300 people. It's on Chabad.org. I invite you to listen to it and comment. The best I could come up with was on that lecture, based on everything that I learned. And it, it's there, and I send people to it. I just tell people always, it, it's because of the nature of the subject. You got to listen to this lecture at least three times. You will not understand at the beginning with it's just because of the nature of it. That's how subtle at the end it is. I invite you to listen and and uh, and your critical comments. It's on Chabad.org. It's called Free Choice, I think. At any rate, it's not the Shaila here at all. all. He's not addressing that. All he's saying is that the emes, the objective truth, even though Takis is Kechovim Mazolois, but still, they're not shoots for him. They have no choice, Kim Shal. It's only that through them goes the divine flow. They're just like an axe in the hand of the woodchopper. 
So the Shaykh Lemish Agaz and the Shutta Bimlechas Achtsiva, you can't, no one's going to say that the axe is a partner in the chopping of the wood, in, in that work. Vishayn de Balpchida Klal, because the axe has no choice at all. All right, we'll, we'll continue this, we'll do that tomorrow. I want to do a little bit of the story to be continued, Beza Hashem.